Welcome to the Parental Investment Extravaganza, starring me, Dan, and Annie. This show is brought to you by Ruth and Emma. Parental investment is defined as any investment by a parent in an offspring that increases the chance that the offspring will survive at the expense of that parent's ability to invest in any other offspring. The investment made by human females is considerably greater than that made by males. For example, the human female produces far fewer gametes over the course of her lifetime than the male produces. The greater investment made by females may also be explained in terms of parental certainty. Because a characteristic of human reproduction is internal fertilisation, this means that unlike males who cannot be certain that they are the father, females can be certain that they are the true parent of their child. Human females invest more because human infants are born relatively immature compared to other animals. In common with mammals, human females breastfeed their young and so are more burdened by the extended period of childcare that results from this prolonged immaturity. Human mothers therefore not only make the greater prenatal contribution of resources in pregnancy, but also make the larger postnatal contribution as well. This is an adult male, Bob. <laughs> he is married to an adult human female and they have offspring together. This adult male is not attractive, so he has been chosen by his wife for the resources that he offers. This is an adult human female. She is married to Bob. He married her because she is attractive and exhibits signs of high fertility. Adult human males find females attractive with large hips, large breasts and small waists, as these are signs of fertility. And in terms of parental investment, the adult human male wants to invest their resources in a partner that will be more likely to produce offspring. The minimum obligatory investment made by human males is considerably less than females, as a man can potentially father an unlimited number of offspring with an unlimited amount of sperm. Our adult female does not benefit from random indiscriminate mating, so she is more likely to be monogamous. However, she may choose to seek a new partner using this method. This is Chris Evans. He has a strong jaw and is apparently physically attractive. Our adult female is considering, a, considering an affair with Chris Evans as he exhibits a strong jaw and body hair which are both indications of high levels of testosterone which make him a good potential mating partner. Because of our adult female's infidelity or potential infidelity, Bob will invest less in her offspring because of paternal uncertainty. Part 2 The Evidence Paternal investment predicted that the male invests less due to paternity uncertainty. This spans across generations. Therefore, Bob's parents would also invest less, particularly his father, as they have least paternal certainty, whereas the maternal grandparents, particularly the grandmother, will have the most paternal cer certainty and invest the most, as found by Shackleford and Al. Parental investment predicted that men seek fertile younger women, while women predict strong men who can provide resources. Buss's cross-cultural study of 37 cultures found that men expressed preference for younger women, while women did indeed express preference for men with good jobs and ambition, which suggest resources. Parental investment theory predicts that men will be sexually jealous while women will be emotionally jealous. This is because men fear cuckolding, whereas women fear a loss of resources, as found by Bus et al. in 1992. Parental investment theory states that women will sometimes choose to have affairs, such as with our adult female and Chris Evans, because they marry good providers but acquire good genes for their children through extramarital partners. Baker and Bellis predicted that as many as 14% of children are products of extramarital affairs. Overall, parental investment theory has some strong evidence, although the strong emphasis on determinism and the role of genetics may overlook the importance of other factors. Thank you for listening to our presentation. 
We appreciate it a lot, and it means a lot to us for you listening. This was brought to you by Ruth and Emma. Thank you.